Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of the Indie Game Reboot. Today I am not going to be talking about a game. Instead I am going to be talking about something that should help players as well as developers have excellent joystick support, as opposed to terrible joystick support or no joystick support whatsoever. If you suspect a game you're playing can have joystick support or better joystick support, the best way to check is with this nifty little program called Joytiki. Joytiki essentially maps out all of your joystick buttons to keys on the keyboard. This is great especially for flash games like Red or that could really benefit from joystick support. Now before we jump into the software we are going to need some hardware. Gamepads in fact. For this review I decided to try two of them. A Super Nintendo controller which can cost between 15 and 50 bucks and a PlayStation 2 controller with an adapter I got from Amazon for about 30 bucks, usually costing about the same as a gamepad. Pretty much any gamepad should work fine, unless it's terrible. In any case, once you have the gamepad installed, you need to set up your controls. There are two ways you can configure your controls. You can individually configure every single little control in depth. Or you can save a lot of time and just use the auto setting wizard. Trust me, you're going to use the auto setting a lot more than the manual settings. So here's how it works. Basically, it displays the button on the gamepad and all you have to do is press the key that you would like that gamepad button to do. For my personal preference, I would like the left button on my gamepad to do the function of the left key on my keyboard. And basically you do that for the buttons you want to use on your joystick. You do not have to use all of them. Some of the things you can do with Joytiki is you can make the controls for any game you play. Assign them to macros in other games. Make them really, really weird. Set them as system functions, and if you're crazy, set them as emoticons in the chat of your choice. You can configure up to 32 buttons. Granted, I've never seen a gamepad with 32 buttons. I imagine it'd probably look something like this. Unless the game you're playing is fairly old, the response time between the controller and the input of the keyboard is instant. You never have to worry about lag between any function. Your settings are saved automatically as you make them, and you can save as many settings as you want and name them pretty much whatever you want. I would however recommend that you save the names as the names of the games, and if you can the type of controller you're using if you have multiple game pads. Some games that really benefit from the joystick support, Cat Planet, Redder, Tetris, Socks and various other laundry? Bone saw? Quicksand? Tasty Static? And pretty much any other game you can think of, including your own. If you're a developer and you're just lazy for some obscure reason, or you really don't want to program joystick support, just set up a setting for multiple controllers and save it along with the executable. That's pretty much all there is to it. So, should you get Joy to Key? In short form, yes. In long form, yes, you should. Now, I do have some tips for using this. For one thing, if the game already has joystick support, don't fool with Joy to Key. For the most part, it disables gamepads from being detected in most games when you hook it up to Joy to Key. Though when it's enabled, games are either going to control really erratically, or they're not going to respond at all. My next tip, never assign escape to any button. I tried it many times, it does not work. Tab selectively works, so I don't recommend that key either. The last tip I have is that there are some flash games, more notably older ones, that have huge delay with Joy to Key, 
So if you plan to play a Flash game, be cautious of what you pick. I believe that this is not the fault of Joydeki, but modern hardware not being compatible with older websites or older Flash. The only site this really seems to affect for me is dandare.org. Well, that's all I have to say. If you like this review, subscribe to my show, and don't forget to check my blog at clockwork7.tumblr.com. Join me next time where I review a game very similar to an MS-DOS classic, where you have to worry about gravity and charge.